Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce a new project called WebSage. Now WebSage is a project you know, in which you can, you know, extract content from any URL, any website, and you can summarize the web pages, you know, you can create embeddings, and you can also, you know, have conversation. If you can use that, you know, in a chatbot feature, you know, to retrieve or discover different kind of information from the websites, right? Now, most of the time, there will be projects where you'll be assigned to work on, you know, web scrapping, web crawler, and then also summarize those details and also have conversation with, you know, those uh, with those content, right? So the idea of Project WebSage is that uh, how you can build it uh, quickly, a very simple project, but really powerful. And you can add this project in your resume. Uh, the code will be available on GitHub repository. So you can take it and you can make it even uh, better. You can enhance this, of course. You can bring more agentic workflows within this project. And I'm going to create two different parts of this video. One part where we're going to look at the RAG feature. And the other part, we're going to look at you know deep research where you can have multiple links within the website so how you're going to crawl the uh, crawl those links as well and then uh, perform some kind of tasks on top of it like summarizations and information discovery so on and so forth so uh, this first video uh, first part of this video is going to feature uh, going to focus on rag and uh, for beginners and also i'm going to include both open source models and closed source model and uh, completely locally right you can completely use this locally uh, using a local vector database or a vector store and also with Olama and also you can use Gemini or GPT-40 or whatever. So let's see here. So you can look at on my screen. It's called Project WebSage. WebSage is a cutting edge rag chatbot application that allows you to extract content from any URL, generate detailed summaries and interact with the content using advanced language models. As I said, we're going to use both closed source, open source models, blah, blah, blah. There is a bit of in home and in the context, I have some uh, thing over there. Now in this URL, let's take a URL. So I'm going to take any URL from the web. And then if you look at here, it will do a step by step, like it's very automated way. You do not have to do anything, uh, you know, in these scenarios. If you look at here, automatically it extract the information from the website, all the content. It says website extraction. And you can kind of, uh, let me show you this. This is only first few lines of the uh, extracted content. This is just the preview. Now here we have three different columns. You see website extraction, create embeddings and chat with the bot. Okay. And I'll also tell you that how you can uh, enhance this. You can also contribute because this is available on GitHub, you can just go and make a PR and we'll enhance it together. I'll, I'll show you how. Now in this website extraction, you see we have extracted text preview. And then you can also download this extracted text. When you click on download, it downloads in a TXT file, the entire content of the page. So you can it, it also acts as a scrapper, right? You can scrap web content. And then we have summarize web page. So when I click on summarize web page, you can see it says summarizing. Now it also starts summarizing the entire content and of course you can create better prompt formats to get it into or tailor that in your uh, required format of summarization so i have a simple prompt that looks at all this content and pass it to a chain and get the summary out of it so if you look at here it says summarized output summary of deloitte insights and research centers because that's the link we have taken a link from the internet and you can see key sections spotlight topics topics covered you know, recent insights, blah, 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 uh, research centers and economic updates and gives you a very detailed summarization of this entire is this entire website. You can see it's a very big website, though. You know, we look at I mean, it has a lot of content. OK, this particular page uh, on web. Now, this is your summarized web page. So what we did so far, we had an URL. We extracted everything using crawl for AI. So I'm going to walk you through the code as well uh, very soon. Now, uh, then we summarize the web page pass it to a chain and we get the summary output here. Now then we have embeddings. So the next step is that we want to vectorize those deep data, right? Because most of the time, if you have a lot of deep links within the website, uh, you will have abundance of text. And if you are using models that does not support 
a lot of context window like it has limitations of context window like gemini's and cloud and all of those models supports millions of context millions of tokens within the context window but if you work with the open source models they might not support more than 128k you know uh, mainly the smaller models they don't even support 100k for example right so in those scenarios you have to vectorize these data right the content that you are getting and it's always better to do a rag approach you know for these kind of problems now when i click on create embeddings you can see it says creating embeddings right now i'm using fast but the next step will be to use a persistent vector database like qdrent or wav8 locally that if you want to use it right you can persist the volumes within the vector database you can see vectors are created and when the vectors are created you can then go into chat with the bot feature if if vectors are not created you can't use this chat bot feature so here we have chat with the bot select llm type closed source and open source when you select closed source like for example let's say uh, tell me about the us economy the reason I'm asking this question because I, I can see in the summary that there was something called US economy. If you look at here, right? So I want to probably understand about that. So when I said, tell me about the US economy and closed source. So for the closed source, I'm using open AI models. You can use Gemini or Cloud or any uh, managed services like Bedrock, etc. if you want to integrate. Now, when I said, tell me about the US economy, you can see it, it's going to run this and give me the answer about the US economy, right? Based on these uh, retrieved vectors the llm is going to synthesize you can see and we are using streamlit underscore chat by yes yes ai which is a streamlit component it gives me overview of the us economy you can see it gives me the us economy has so notable strength blah 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 labor market consumer behavior and whatnot and you can also bring the page content source source document to find out the references right that will be also good now this is closed source what if I do open source, right? Tell me about the US economy and with the open source. Now, when you do open source, it uses Olama based models, like the models which are being inferred by Olama. You can see I'm already running Olama in a different terminal. You can see it says Olama run. And it's a deep seek model, the smallest variant of digital deep seek R1 model. You can see deep seek R1, 1.5D. And I don't have a lot of CPU compute. Uh, right now in this particular machine that I'm using to create this video. So I'm using the smallest variant of DeepSeq 1.5B and that's also do a, that also basically perform really good. If you look at here, it gives this, gives you the same consumer spending, inventory accumulation, and basically brings you everything from here. Like we saw that in US economy, the labor markets, blah, 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 right? So it gives you consumer behavior, labor markets, overview of the US economy and whatnot. This is what we're going to build here, guys, you know, closed source, open source. And you can also make this modular, you know, this system lit app. I leave up to you. So, for example, you can let user enter their keys, API keys if for the closed source. Like if they're using OpenAI or Cloud or model, you can have uh, that as well. But yeah, this is what we're going to do. You can enhance this further. Now, let me give you a walkthrough of the code. Now. Very simple documented code. I'm not going to write this because I already have videos on the individual modules that I'm using here. So for example, for the data extraction from the website, I'm using crawl for AI. You can use, you can use fire crawl. You can use Gina AI reader. You can use crawl for AI. You can use any other things as well, guys. Depends on what you really want to do, right? Now, here are all the imports. So streamlit, some of the system utilities, for asynchronous, we are using async IO, some of the Langchain thingy. So we are using Markdown Loader. I'm going to talk about it. We have recursive character text splitter, open AI embeddings, and FAST. You can also use QDRON to wav whatever you want to use. We have prompt template. We have chat open AI, chat Olama, and retrieval QA. From crawl for AI, we are using async web crawler, cache mode, and crawler run config. And we're using a stimulate component called stimulate chat for the chatbot. Now, you need to install Playwright if you are using, using Windows machine and if you want to use crawl for AI. So that is very important. Before I go into the code, I'm going to show you the Docker file as well if you are working with Docker. right? So if you are on Ubuntu machine or like a Linux distro, you know these are the things that you need to install to work smoothly with crawl for AI. So I'm using Python 3.12. And only the slim thing. You can also use Slim Buster if you want to have a smaller uh, volume of containers. Uh, I have 
uh, working directory, upstate the working directory, then I'm, you know, co copying these requirements, txt, all the requirements file that I have. And then after that, you know, I am installing it here. And then I am installing Playwright if I am on Windows machine and then exposing 8.5.0.1, which is the port required for streamlit application and then running this on. So this is my Docker file. If you want to use Docker to run this, you can also feel free to do that. I will recommend you to do that. And this is the requirements txt. You can see it over here. The moment you, you know, uh, extract, it also saves the output.md. You can see it saves the file, everything, right? All the content from that website. And once we have this output.md, we read this file to create vectors. So I will walk that through. Now, here we are setting Windows event loop policy for crawl for ai needs this. Uh, make sure you import this on top of the code. Here we are initializing all the session state variable because Streamlit refreshes the page if you don't use it when you click on a button. So we need to initialize all the session state variables. So I am using URL submitted, extractions, extracted text, embeddings, vector store, all of those, you know, in a session, you can see. I have a page config. I named the page title web stage. Page config is nothing, but this is what called web stage. You can see it over here on top. And I'm using a wide layout, you can see. And then the title, I have three different sidebar menu, home, AI engine, and contact. In the first, I'm gonna do if, elif, if, elif, and else kind of like conditionals to navigate through these menus, right? Now in the menu home, I have some uh, descriptions about the app. Now here in the AI engine, I have an input URL box where I can you know, do a text input. You can see it over here, enter a URL to crawl. And then I have all my, uh, like looking at all the previous state, if there's any previous state, reset it. You can see it over here. And if URL has been submitted, once the URL has been submitted, I want to you know, divide the wide layout in three different columns, ht.columns. That's what I'm doing it over here, you can see. And in column one, I have website extractions and summarization code. So I use, this is all loaders and stuff, and I use a function, an async function called simple crawl. You can see it over here. That takes the URL and returns a markdown after extracting it, right? And run the async crawler, blah, blah, blah. It saves the output. Uh, you know, it gives you a few lines of code, you know, the preview, few, few lines of extracted text uh, as a preview. Have a download button that downloads all the output. And then I have a summarization thingy, a summary prompt template. You can see a summary prompt template. Uh, we are formatting it and using chat open AI, using GPT-4 Ohm Mini to summarize it. You can also use Olama here, just add few lines of code, right? From the below, you can take it. The number two is creating embedding with FAS. So I'm using FAS, but you can, you can see I'm using unstructured markdown loader to load this output.md. And, you know, I'm using loader.load and using recursive character text splitter have a chunk size of 1000 and a 10% of that as a chunk overlap. And then split the document and use open AI keys using embedding three large model to create the embeddings and then build a fast vector store, save that locally. So I'm persisting it. This is optional thing, but you can do it. You can see it creates a folder called FAS index, and there are two files, index.fas, index.pkl. If you don't want to overwrite this, then you have to assign IDs to each file and then create like that file ID and chunk ID also, whatever you want to do it to, uh, to update the chunks as well, right? In the collection, if you want to do it, you can do that as well. Now embeddings are created. Now number three is extremely chat using a retrieval chain. So here we have open source, closed source thingy. We have top key document five and a prompt template passing all the context and question and then creating a, a chain type. And if you want closed source, use OpenAI model, Gemini model, whatever. In the Olama, I'm using DeepSeq 1.5b and then creating a retrieval QA chain. You can also do a conversational retrieval QA chain, keep them inbuilt memory, right? Uh, for a demo project and kind of stuff. You can also use Postgres and stuff if you want to persist memory. Or at, at a larger scale. And now here I'm using chat inference with extremely chat. You can see it over here. Saving all the chat file to a history. It's called chat history. You can see all the chat that you do. It's saved in a file. It's better for later references if you want to share that with any colleague, right? You can share with your colleague, right? That's all guys, you know, and then we have a contact page. So very simple, uh, but very powerful. You know, to add that in your resume, you can add that uh, very, 
interesting project, right? You see, it has a lot of potential to do a lot of things. And in the next video, we're going to include deep research into it, right? So we're going to have ability to crawl the inner URLs within the page. So in a page, there might be 10 other URLs. So how we can go through all those 10 URLs, get all the content, and then vectorize it, and then go through the same process. So that should be the next video. But if you are already doing it, you know, enhancing this project, let me know in the comment box because the code of this project will always already be available on GitHub. So you can just go and, you know, take the code from there and start working on it. That's all guys. I wanted to create a project that you can use it in your resume. Just take, make it your, like make it yours. Now you can just say that's my project and, you know, put that in your resume or deploy this on a Streamlit uh, cloud as well. Just make sure that you bring this uh, or APIs to be given by the user. You can have a form input where you can take these APIs and then start using it as a stimulate or session or secrets, not session, stimulate secrets. And you can use it like that. So I I hope you understood a bit how you can build this kind of project, but this project is for you and enhance it further. Make a PR on GitHub and let me know. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, ask me in the comment. You can reach out to me through my social media channels. Find all the information on channel banner and channel about us. And if you like the video, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel guy. That motivates me to create more such videos in your future. Share this video and channel with your friends and to peer. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.